Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to break down the new War Scroll for the Glotkin. Now, this is an absolutely fantastic model, some great lore behind it, and, uh, you know, it, it's been one of my favorites in Nurgle for a while. Um, I really liked it in uh, the previous book, and it is very interesting in the new Maggotkin of Nurgle Battle Tome. So up on the screen here, you can see that we've got the actual war scroll for the Glotkin, and I'm not going to worry too much about, uh, you know, reading off the war scroll for now, because we're going to break this down really ability for ability. Um, I think the only things that I would really note here um, that we're not going to talk about in a future slide is what brackets on the damage table and your number of attacks on the missile attack go down they start at seven and go down to four uh, but the brackets also start at seven wounds so this guy's going to take seven damage before he starts decreasing in power um, and then for melee weapons the tentacle attacks those start at four and go down to one um, and that is also your most powerful attack that he has going on and then our Mountains of Loathsome Flesh ability, that starts at five mortal wounds and goes down to one. So, what does all of this mean? How does it all break down? Um, let's get into the finer details here. All right. So in combat, this guy has 20 wounds, he's got a four up save and five up disgusting resilience so that means on average it's going to take about 60 damage to bring the glotkin down yeah you know, that is a combination of you know wounds that are saved and damage that's saved by disgusting resilience adding on top of that the glotkin is a locus of fecundity so in each of your hero phases he is going to heal d3 instead of one and then for Heroic Recovery, he is Bravery 9, which means he's got a 72% odds of healing D3 wounds in every hero phase that he is not in combat. Because we just got that new FAQ, that modified Heroic Recovery, so that is definitely worth noting that he's not going to heal up quite as much as he used to. But, um, as we're going to see when we take a look at offense, I think there's going to be a lot of instances where, on one turn, he just totally mercs whatever he's in front of and so the next hero phase he won't have anything he's in combat with so uh, he'll be able to heal up so that is a lot of damage that you're going to have to do to this guy to actually kill him because it's not just you know the the, four, the 20 wounds on the four up save with five up disgusting resilience you have to deal with all the healing that he can do as well on offense his attacks are going to average 12 damage against a four up save so that is the tentacles the scythe um the maw all of that going into something i'm not including in here the shooting attack that'll pile on a couple of more wounds as well his mountains of loathsome flesh ability that is a monstrous rampage um so on a two plus he does five mortal wounds to an enemy unit that he is in combat with. Now, it's important to note here that this is not a modified stomp. This is a special rule on his war scroll that looks a lot like stomp, but does not have the same restrictions that stomp does. So this can be done to an enemy monster as well. That is very important to note. And five mortal wounds is a heck of a lot of damage to be doing to an enemy monster. So, what does that mean? You might be able to bracket an enemy monster right off the rip in the charge phase before they have a chance to make any attacks. That is really super valuable. So then we have to factor in disease as well. So, he is going to average about... Uh, two disease tokens per combat phase so that'll produce another mortal wound from disease so that puts him at an average of 18 damage per turn when he's in his top bracket 
which of course you can always spend a command point to have him fight in the top bracket all the time, which I think is probably going to be valuable for the Glotkin. So this is a lot of damage that he can put out and a lot of healing. This guy is, you know, he is going to take a beating and he's going to dish out a beating. And because he dishes out such a beating, he is going to be even harder to kill because you're probably going to need to double charge him or your opponent's going to need to charge him in their turn and activate first against him. So it's going to sort of force their hand into uh, a certain activation sequence that you might be able to take advantage of. So I think, um, you know, his offense oddly actually adds to his durability and, uh, when it doesn't add to his durability, it could potentially be making your opponent make choices that are not necessarily the best choices. Or at least produce other opportunities for you. So, on the magic side of things, working our way down into his abilities here, he does cast and unbind two spells per turn. Uh, he doesn't have any bonuses to cast or unbind, though. He's just got you know, the flat two casts and two unbinds per turn. His spell is Abundance of Flesh. Um, casts on a seven and a mortal Maggotkin unit gets an additional wound until your next hero phase. This seems really good on paper, but the problem is that the two targets that you're really going to want to put this on are either Blight Kings or Pusqua Blight Lords or all of your other mortal Maggotkin options or heroes. So that's pretty restrictive. Like this is only giving you two extra wounds per unit of Pusk Oils or five extra wounds per unit of Blight Kings. And when they're throwing as, around as many wounds as they already have on their War Scroll, it, it's not going to give you a tremendous amount of benefit to get this spell off, especially when it casts on a seven. Like this is very unreliable for an ability that doesn't do a lot. So I don't really like this spell that much um in general i'm not that exciting about the magic on this guy at all um out of the spell lore um spells that he can possibly do rancid visitations is a really interesting one because it would cast on an enemy unit that he's already in combat with and dish out a whole bunch of mortal wounds uh Magnificent Bubos, that is uh, giving an enemy unit minus one to hit. So that is buffing up the defense of your units a little bit. And then Gift of Disease, that just sort of sprays some disease on enemy units. So important to note here that because the Glotkin is unique, uh, you can't take any spells from the Universal Spell Lore, which Flaming Weapon on this guy would be really nice, but we can't do it. Also because he's unique you cannot take any command traits or artifacts on him as well. So what you see is what you get on his war scroll. You can't really buff him up in other ways. So overall, uh, magic is very uninteresting on this guy. I think most of the time he's probably going to want to mystic shield himself. And then, geez, beyond that, I don't really know. Uh, it would be a, a tough choice for me for what spell you'd even put on him. I think uh, Magnificent Bubos is a nice utility spell, and Gift of Disease just sort of spreads around some disease tokens, does some mortal wounds eventually for you. So his other abilities, he is a War Master, so he always counts as your general, and the important thing there is that it extends command ability ranges to 18 inches. So that gives his command ability on his War Scroll a lot of extra power. Uh, next ability we have up here is Horrific Opponent. So this goes off at the start of the enemy movement phase. You roll 2d6 against enemy bravery. If you beat the enemy bravery that he's within three inches of, uh, that unit must either retreat or suffer, suffer d6 mortal um, I'm not sure I really understand this one because he really wants to be in combat because he's really tanky and really strong. So forcing your opponent to retreat is just sort of giving them a present. 
so to speak, or it's going to be something that they're going to do anyway in the movement phase. And then D6 Mortal Wounds, if they don't do that, is definitely strong, but it's... It, that whole being able to get out of the D6 Mortal Wounds by retreating out of combat... Um, I, I don't know. It, it's just not that exciting to me. Uh, where the money on this guy really is, though, is his command ability, the Blight Krieg. So this is at the end of the enemy movement phase. If the Glotkin and another Maggotkin unit um, are both within 12 inches of an enemy unit at the end of the movement phase, both of them can make charge moves. So that because he's a war master, that means the range of this is going to be 18 inches uh, to the other Maggotkin unit. So that's why I'm saying here that the other Maggotkin unit is within 18 inches of him. So this makes for a really interesting situation here as to what this guy actually does. Um, not only is he a total beater in combat that your opponent wants to avoid, it becomes like a really big bubble around him that your opponent wants to avoid. You know, they, your opponent can't really get away with just kind of getting some models onto an objective and staying three inches away from you, not getting into combat, and stealing the objective. Um, if they try and pull something like that, they're just going to get countercharged. So it definitely is a great tool for, um, you know, popping this guy on an objective with another unit nearby him that... Uh, you know, the two of them together can kind of protect an objective really effectively because it's going to stop your opponent from charging onto it. And, you know, it is going to um, really force your opponent to stay away from, you know, whatever objective that they're on. Um, the catch is really that you have to have the, the Glock kid and another unit that are within 12 inches of the enemy. So... Really, both of them kind of have to get up in your opponent's face to a certain degree. But if you're parking them in the middle of the battlefield, it's something your opponent kind of can't ignore. Because of the timing of this as well, uh, this triggers at the end of the enemy movement phase. So at all of those abilities that happen at the end of the movement phase that bring uh, units onto the board, um, those are all typically happening at the end of the movement phase as well. Um, your uh, Karadran Overlords, they're doing their fly high at the end of the movement phase. Your uh, Stormcast are coming down nine inches away at the end of the movement phase. Various other similar teleporting or deep striking abilities are at the end of the movement phase. And a lot of those things want to deep strike down and then charge into you subsequently. So, you know, something like a unit of Fulminators up against the Glotkin, you, you have a very good chance to get a charge off on those Fulminators and deny their extra damage on the charge. And there's certainly other units as well that get charge bonuses. So it's going to keep them away and leave them with very difficult charges if, um, you know, if they uh, don't want to make too much of a gamble. So I really like this command ability a lot. I think this is really where the Glotkin shines. And um, it's where a lot of his value is really going to be coming from. So overall, what is the Glotkin? How do you use them? You know, what are they doing on the battlefield for you? It is a very expensive unit to have in your army right now they are at 700 points i fully expect their point value to come down because i don't think a lot of people are even going to be running this especially competitively and with that um i think that'll probably be a signal that the uh points value needs to come down I, a lot of people are saying this is the most overvalued thing in the book um and i definitely would agree with that uh if if anything in the book really needs to come down, it's the Glotkin. One of the really big problems with the Glotkin is that it's very slow. It only moves four inches. So with only a four inch move, 
you know, you can at the double them in your turn. So they get 10 inches in the first turn. They no longer have anything that can give them run in charge. So they're just going to charge out into the middle of the battlefield and sit there. That's a little bit of, uh, you know, a negative for the Glotkin, certainly. Well, I, you know, let me be honest. That's a huge drawback for the Glotkin. It's not just really a little. Uh, like, yes, they can charge out there and get into the middle of the battlefield. And I think ultimately what you really want to do with these guys, building them in a list, is use a battle regiment to make a one drop list and take first turn and your first thing you're going to do in the movement phase is taking the glotkin and you know using at the double moving them 10 inches out into the middle of the battlefield and just kind of saying come at me bro and then you can potentially use blight krieg in your opponent's turn to get that off phase charge move and get into combat with them um the Glotkin is incredibly hard to kill. It is a big tank, and it also hits really hard. So that kind of makes it doubly tanky, because he, it's not just sitting there and grinding, it's sitting there and killing you a lot while you try and grind it down. You have to really kind of punch at it and grind it down all in one turn, or with a lot of shooting, to really bring this guy down. The big thing that he really does is the area denial with Blight Krieg. I, I think that's really huge for this guy. He's going to deny your enemy charge bonuses. He's going to just sort of own his area of the battlefield. And that's really powerful. Like, if you can get him out into a space where your opponent wants to be and needs to be to win the game, then... It, the Blight Krieg is incredibly powerful. It lets you dictate more where combats are going to happen. So the question overall is, is this guy actually a good value? Because I don't think there's any question here that this is a good war scroll. This guy is really, really good. The question is, is he too many points for how good he is? I think you're, I'm definitely feeling a little bit more positive on the Glotkin the more that I think about it, and uh, the more I see feedback from people that have played with it. It seems like um, he's just very powerful, and it, because he has that area denial effect, you know, he has this weird effect where your opponent either stays away from him and now you've zoned out part of the board and you just own at least one objective with him or your opponent comes after him and then they probably bounce off him because he's really hard to kill and then he just crushes anything he comes into combat with so that is certainly um certainly something to be considered here also his Mountains of Loathsome Flesh ability is really powerful. Um, five damage, like five mortal wounds, is a lot to be dealing out before your opponent has a chance to swing in combat. So he's always decreasing the enemy power before they have a chance to you know, operate with their unit at full power. So that is, oddly, again, that's another sort of defensive ability. Even though it is offensive and doing damage, it's doing damage in a way that is going to prevent your opponent from actually like being able to use their offense against him. You know, he's going to kill some models out of a unit. He's going to bring down uh, a monster's damage table. There's a lot that he can really do uh, just with what happens in the charge phase um, to really soften the blow from the enemy. So I like the Glotkin a lot. I am still undecided on his actual value. I feel like I need to put him on the table and see how he plays, see how it feels, try and build lists around him to see 
how he's actually going to perform. But I think there's definitely potential there. It's just a matter of finding the right combination of things in a list to make him work, I think. So that is it for now, guys. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, Patreon down below in the description if you would be so kind to make a donation to our cause. And as always, we thank you for watching and we'll talk to you all later.